Listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore. My guest tonight is Michelle LeBaron. And I know quite a few of you know who she is. Um, you've seen her on Facebook and she's, she's a pretty well tries to stay drama free, even though sometimes people just push her buttons. And, uh, from that, I found out that I really like her a lot because she actually says what's on her mind and (laughs) I respect that. So welcome to the show, Michelle. Hi, how are you? Fine. (laughs) And like I said, I, I remember watching a couple of your videos that you'd done on Facebook, calling people out for being bullies and and things like that. Usually I'll put, I won't put out a video on anything like that. Sometimes I'll write something up and put it out there, but mostly because of the fact that I don't need the stress of defending myself. You seem to thrive on that part. (laughs) You know, I, I've been through it a lot these past few years um, from people that are just, you know, um, not very nice people. You think they're nice. You think they're your friends. They use you. um, They talk smack about you, lies about you, you know, and and then I find that people send me screenshots of these so-called friends of mine. And, and, you know, I've come to now to the point where if somebody says anything about me or says lies or starts spreading stuff on Facebook or, you know, name bash me, I'll go on and I'll tell them. I'll I'll say, you know, if you hear anything, don't believe it. You know, some of you people that do know me you know, know that it's not true. And what I do is I block them. I block them immediately and I don't have to look at their stuff. I don't have to hear about it. I don't have to see them. And I say what I have to say and I leave it at that and I drop it. I don't go any further with the drama because it's just, it's, it's just stupid. It's, I mean, it's like, Junior high school. Yeah. Junior high school stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to put up with it and I won't. And, and, and now it's got to the point if someone wants to say smack or, or anything, I will name, I will name bash you. I will say your name and then I will stop it there and I will leave it at that. And you know what? Every time that I have like said what I had to say and I backed off of it, um, they just went away. They just went away and I didn't have to deal with it anymore. Well, that's good. Cause yeah, cause I know I was getting uh, bullied this month from the, you know, Rick Rose passing um, because me and a few other people were really good friends of his and we were standing up for him and I even got death threats. And the thing is, is it wasn't people in the paranormal. It was just people that were militant about, covid um one way or another didn't matter which way they went yeah. but you know they 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 fed into 
to everything, made Rick famous all around the world. <laughs> and he would have loved every yeah. minute of it. So that's the way we're looking at it is, you know, he yeah, got what he wanted. You no, know, it, it's all the COVID thing. It is, but it's also political. It is. A lot of it is political. And there are so many fanatical people out there with politics. I'm not political. I'm not. I mean, and 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 I've seen people um, unfriend people because of their political views and their opinions, and it's it's absolutely sad. It especially is, especially when people have been friends for so long. And you, I agree. You, I mean, you could have a friend for twenty years, and because you don't agree with their political opinions or anything else, then then you're just going to drop them. Like, oh, I don't want to hear it. Bye. It's like that is like what the hell? Yeah, <laughs> I'm I I agree. Grounded. I mean, if I don't like something I see, I just I just don't I just move on. Yeah, you well, know, post, and you I, know, the posts when people are posting stuff and then other people have opinions about it. You know, that's the thing. That's the same thing with me. If I see a political post, I just scroll right by. I, I don't. I do. I don't entertain it. I don't comment. Because it just, it's just, oh my gosh, it's like freaking fanatical big time. The way I I feel about it is people are allowed to have their opinions, whether whether I agree with their opinion or not. Absolutely. And if I don't like it, I just don't, just don't say anything and I move on. And if they keep saying stuff like that, I just unfollow them so I don't see it. And, you know, now they've added a few things in there. We can unfollow them for 30 days. But again, they don't know that you've unfollowed them mm-hmm. until they ask mm-hmm. you something. Hey, did you see this post? And you go, nope, didn't see it. Yeah, I do that. I, I do like it sucks sometimes because sometimes I'll see like just very depressing and negative posts from people that I know. And mm-hmm. I'd have to unfollow them because it affects me. Mm -hmm. And it puts me in the worst slump. My anxiety just triggers and, and I get sad. I feel emotion so deeply. I feel others emotions. I mean, even if I don't know these people and I see their posts about their sadness or, or anything, I, I feel it and it just brings me down. So I unfollow. So it doesn't pop up on my newsfeed. Right. I mean, I, I don't want to I, it. I, well, I understand that because you're an empath. Yeah. So, so it makes it really hard. I mean, if I see something from certain people, if I've, if I've met you personally and I see a post, I am, I am an immediately invested. Mm-hmm. Does it, doesn't matter if I liked you when I met you or not, but I'm immediately invested. <laughs> and I, I feel like I've got to, to pray for them or whatever it is that they want. If they want me to send positive thoughts, I'll send positive thoughts. But, you know, I feel like I'm immediately invested because I am somewhat empathic. I can't, I don't feel everybody's pain. Thank God. I, there's no way. <laughs> there's no, no I, way I could deal with that. I do. And it's a curse for me. It yeah. Is. I, it, it's just too much. So like I said, if, Once I've talked to someone and get to know them, you know, there have been times where we've, we've passed messages back and forth because you said something and, and it was because somebody had been really rude Uh or, or it hurt your feelings and you could tell when you're reading it and I would send you something and just go, is everything okay? And then you tell me what's going on and lo and behold, we're, you know, in 10 minutes we're done, but you know, I feel like I, that I have a connection to you and we were supposed to uh-huh. actually meet this past weekend. Yes, we were down, down here in Conway, Arkansas. Yeah. And, uh, in your mind, you're probably going to little rock, but no, it was a little bit North of there <laughs> Yeah. Uh, in Conway. And, you know, my husband and I met in Arkansas, not that part. Yeah. The, the, the awful part that floods really bad, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so we have a connection to Arkansas and we were going to go down there for that. And it was the first time somebody had asked me to speak at an event. And I was like, well, I want to go. 
Yeah. You know, and then when I saw that you were going to be there, I was like, oh, so that'll be fun. I get to meet her. And when I saw <laughs> that they, when they did their poster, I was, I had to laugh. I said, why do they have me above Daniel class? They should have me down on the bottom somewhere. You know, <laughs> I, I've never done any. And they told me it was because I'm local and people know who I am in the Midwest. So yeah. they were trying to draw those people that are close by. And I was like, okay, well, that, that makes a little bit more sense. But still, you know, I didn't think that I should have been above Daniel class. You know, <laughs> so it's just I, a poster. I know, but it made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> because, cause, you know, because most of the posters that you see, it shows all the, you know, big pictures for, for the bigger names and then smaller pictures for, you know, lesser known and then teeny tiny <laughs> pictures for those that nobody knows who in the heck they are, but they're, they're getting their name out there. Oh, I thought I'd, I thought I'd be in one of those little, little bitty pictures that, you know, nobody knows who I am, but here we go. <laughs> I think everyone should be treated the same, really. Well, yes and no. Doesn't I, I do. I mean, I think if you put a poster, I don't think it doesn't matter. If I was last on a poster, man, I'd be so happy. I mean, it's I mean, I don't care, you know. That's it's, how I was. If I was last, I'd have been just as happy with that too, you know. Oh, in my, yeah. So in my I case, know. I was I was just excited to be asked. And uh it, it is what it is. I just thought it would be be a fun fun time you know because maybe someday i won't live in the middle of the country where i can get to stuff as fast <laughs> you know yeah it would have been a really cool event i was actually looking forward to it um, yeah the one last year that they did was really interesting uh back in the 80s early early 80s when i first moved to arkansas dog patch usa was a big deal <laughs> It was on all the Arkansas brochures. I mean, the very front front of it. It was brand new amusement park. Everybody talked about it. It was great. And that's where their event was last year. Uh -huh. um, but it was scary there because there were animals. <laughs> oh. Not control, uncontrolled animals. Spiders. There were spiders really big. And, and no, it was thank cold. You. And it was cold <laughs> for May. Um because it was raining and stuff, I had hot hands and people were laughing at me for bringing hot hands in May. Guess who all wanted my hot hands <laughs> after a few hours? Uh, so there was a lot of spiders? Yeah, there oh. was a lot of spiders. Now, at the fee house, I don't know anything about it other than I know that it's an actual house. Yeah. Unlike, you know, the squatters that were living in the old amusement park buildings down there in uh, Dog Patch, which was weird. You know, you see this weird building that looks like a giant rock and somebody's living in it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. That's but funny. <laughs> it, funny and scary, too, because you don't oh, know yeah. who these people are. And, and of course, it was way out in the in the boonies on twisty, turny roads. and But there was a crystal place just up the, up the road from there where you could go and dig your own crystals and go into a crystal mine. Oh my gosh, I've seen some of those um, stones and crystals that you can get in Arkansas. Oh my gosh, amethyst and yep, there's oh. a there's like four or five different places. Um, we were talking to David Glidden last week, and um, he goes down to Mina to the crystal camp there. Uh huh. And he's going. He goes, "You guys got to come with me to go camp." And I said, "Well, as soon as you invite us, we'll be there." You know, <laughs> so wow. give me a date. And I'll go. It will. They they used it when he, they filmed Into the Light, too. So if you ever want to see the place, it was pretty interesting. And they've spoken. The people who own Crystal Camp spoke at the Kansas City Paracon last year. And they were supposed to speak at it this year. But Kansas City's got some hell, hellacious rules. And yeah. so even with social distancing, you can't do it. So it's, mm. it's kind of, kind of weird how, I mean, I live just South of Kansas city. We don't have any restrictions. Yeah. Where we live, but we're rural. You know, when you're rural, it's totally different than when you're not. We haven't, you know, me personally, I haven't had any issues with any of the stuff going on other than some friends passing. Jeez. 
it's yeah. scary. Yeah, I know. And you're, you know, you've been traveling. Have you been traveling by plane or by car or plane? <laughs> uh, yeah. That would have been a heck of a drive, though. I mean, yeah, I, I rather have drove because then I'm like really social distancing myself. But, uh, um, but no, the the plane. I mean, ugh, the plane was filled from uh, Phoenix to Charlotte, and I. I mean, there was like nobody in the middle seat with me, and then there was a person by the window. But, I mean, it was still too close for comfort. Right. Everybody know? had to walk past you. Yeah. And and then my friends, the ones, the, uh, my friend T and Jose, they they came up with me. We worked together. We're, we're in Jefferson to uh, ship out this huge order, this truck order. Um, and uh, they were sitting in the back. And they had people next to them, the all three seats filled. And I was like, oh, my, you know, I was like, this is not practicing social distancing. I mean, so they so they overbooked the plane. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was there was probably I was kind of up. I was like in row 11, I think I was. And they were in the back in the 20. um, And it's like everybody went to the back. And I was like, oh, good Lord. Those poor people and my friends texted me. She's like, is anyone sitting with you? And I'm like, well, yeah. But then it would have been uncomfortable for all three of us because this person that we don't know was sitting, you know, right there and actually was coughing and, you know, sniffling. And thank God I had the aisle seat because I was like leaning over like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just kept moving your feet in every time they come back with the cart. <laughs> oh, I fell asleep with my earphones on, and the the girl touched me, like like tapped me, and I woke up. You know, well, I was I couldn't see her, but I felt her touch me, and I'm like, oh, like that, and I looked <laughs> at her, and she goes, I have to go potty, and I'm like, okay, so I got up real quick and I twisted my knee. <laughs> oh no, that hurt. I um, bet. And I hollered. I mean, everyone on the plane heard it. Um, but, uh, yeah, my knee's kind of hurting. But that woman kept getting up and down, up and down, going to the bathroom. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Well, and, and how long of a flight is that? <sighs> it was like five, uh, two hours from Reno to Phoenix. Then Phoenix to Charlotte was, I think, four hours and 45 minutes. So probably a total, a little over six hours flight total. Wow. Yeah. I, the, I mean, the Phoenix one was fine um, because it was a smaller plane. There was less people. I mean, there were seats that weren't even filled. But this American airline flight from Phoenix to Charlotte was like packed. I was like, oh, my God. Did they have uh, partitions in between the was, seats? Partitions? No. No. Oh. So mm-hmm. so they're wanting to partition you in this the casino. Yeah. But well we had a, an issue. We went to the casino h- here and they told everybody you have to wear masks. Well, the thing is is the smokers the mask was down around their neck and they're uh-huh. just smoking and it's like, well didn't they say that it's the particles from your mouth and your nose spreading this. I said, this is bad. We got to leave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because my husband and I, we're, not, we're non-smokers. So we had our masks on and, you know, the only time we could take ours, you know, lift ours up or down was when we got a drink. And it's like, it's I don't even know if I, I want, I, it is. I, I've been around cause I, I quit the tobacco use stuff. Um, in February. Um, right. So, well, you know what? We're going to talk a little bit more about some paranormal stuff when we come back. But okay. you know what, everybody? We're, you're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. We'll be back in just a few minutes. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama.
Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. You are listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. Listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Since 1948, Faith Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hobson Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight is Michelle LeBaron. She is considered a ghost magnet, and I'm going to have her tell you why. Why are you a ghost magnet? Oh, gosh. (laughs) <laughs> well, I think a lot of people are ghost magnets, um, but that's just a name that was given to me by friends. Um, like, uh, you know, cause every time I'll go out with some people and investigate a lot of like weird happenings happen for them. And a lot of evidence is captured when I'm around and they would say, Oh my gosh, miss, you're such a ghost magnet. And then that's when, you know, that's how come my name, my nickname is the ghost magnet, because I guess that's what, what. <laughs> it was given to me by friends and it's just stuck with me. So. Well, but, at least they noticed. Yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of times they don't. Huh? You know, a lot of times people don't notice that paranormal activity goes up when certain people are around. Yeah, it, I think, well, when the people that I'm with, though, I mean, I think it's more of a vibe and, and we all feel each other's energy. And, you know, if, if there's someone like I don't know and I don't like their vibe, it's negative, you know, it we don't get much. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think the it, it's got to be the people you surround yourself with. It makes it happen because the energy is amazing and the spirits love it and they feed it and they thrive on it. And that's how they show themselves and talk to you. Have you ever been to a paranormal location where everything that happened was negative? Um, not, not really negative, more chaotic. Okay. It's like chaos. Um, I've, I've really, it's never been like anything happy when I investigate. I, I can't tell you that it's, it's like a wonderful, pleasant investigation. Um, it's, it's just, um, I don't know. 
it, it's chaos sometimes, um, which is at the Washoe Club. I've had chaos, like things just happening all at once and noises and sounds. And, and then there's good energy and bad energy. And it, it's all energy. All mm-hmm. of it. Um, the so Washoe good. Club is on my husband's list. It's an amazing, amazing building. Um, that place does not disappoint. I mean, I've probably investigated that place over 30 times. That's how much I love it. Um, I've gotten some of my best evidence there. Well, I don't like calling it evidence. I like calling it possible paranormal evidence because then, you know, I don't know what, you know, some people ask me, well, how do you know that that's not a lens flare or you know, so I call it possible because you get a lot of people that like to poo-poo that stuff. So they, they, well, for most people, if they didn't, if they weren't there, if they didn't witness it personally, then, you know, that's your evidence, but not necessarily anything that proves anything to anyone else. You know, so I, I can, I understand that because I know I yell at the TV a lot. You know, it's yeah. like, fo- it's like football here when I'm watching a paranormal show. It's yeah. Like, oh, it's that's, a light that's... anomaly. No, it's not. It's a piece of dust. Yes. Or and you know. or your it's lining up on you know your SLS is lining up on a line and it's making that person look like making it look like there's a stick figure there because you got a line. <laughs> it, it, it's, <laughs> it's false positives. It, it's it's it it some sometimes those SLS cameras capture structures like walls or ends of walls or or banisters on stairwells or chairs Um, oh yeah it's false positives um i actually you know i used to i i don't use the sls very much you know i have one um and i actually used it at a new location that uh reap investigations and brentwood ghost tours will be doing an event and it's going to be an intimate small event um but i captured two people dancing on the balcony and as i rose raised the uh connect in the the um camera and you can see it on my camera there's nothing there's nothing to capture a false positive there's no banister or anything there was an umbrella but if it's just one umbrella it's not going to pop up two figures i mean it they physically look like they're michael jackson doing the moonwalk and and (laughs) pop locking it's pretty amazing um but i have tested out sls cameras and i have seen um that they sometimes give a false positive if you go up a flight of stairs it'll capture the sides of the walls and it'll make stick figures yeah. So I I've mean, seen it I've seen it do it with curtains, you know, where there's a pleat and a curtain. Yeah. Uh door jam, the chairs like you said, you know, paneling, anything yeah. that has a line if it picks up if it picks up that it's different. Mm-hmm. And and it and it does that and it's like, okay. You know. I mean, some people enjoy using it. And and they they feel like they get evidence that you know okay that's their thing. I don't I don't ever poo poo anybody's stuff. I don't go on there and say, uh, oh, uh, you know that's a, a bug or a piece of dust or you know I don't do that. Because I do on TV. I'm not there in the moment. I'm not right. in their moment. Um, mm-hmm. They see a, a light anomaly and it shows up on their camera. And and thinking maybe it's a relative, like, oh, my God, my, my mom. Is this my mom? You know, maybe it is. To them, they think it is. Let them believe it. I mean, you don't want to give someone, like, there's no hope for them, you right. know, when where they're going to go in the afterlife. If I mean, I know it exists. I know the afterlife exists. There's just way too much that I have seen and felt and captured and have heard to not, to not believe it. I agree. I, I believe that there's something that out there that there is that we are not going to know for sure exists until after we pass. 
Yeah, I think we're in hell. This is hell. And then when we when we die, we go to the light. That's just what I feel. I just wonder if we're actually in purgatory. We could be, you know, paying, paying our dues so that we can go to a better place. Yeah. But but our reality is is that we don't know for sure where uh, we are. So we try to enjoy what we can. You know, that's yeah. what we can do. So while you're yeah. out in North Carolina, are you going to be doing any investigation while you're out there? Um actually I actually the free time that I did have, I do have. I actually Saturday I got off work, so I'm working six days a week, 10-hour shifts, so I'm really exhausted when I get home or get to my hotel, but uh, Saturday, I was with a friend of mine. She was a friend from Reno. She moved to North Carolina, which was really cool because we met up, and we both did some investigations. Um, We met up with a woman that has a really cute um, little mystical shop called the southern um what is it called oh my gosh i'm gonna get in trouble oh boy i forgot the name of it (laughs) but anyways um the southern gothic there we go the southern gothic uh shop she has a lot of witchy stuff uh crystals jewelry um and then she has this it's an old building jefferson's very old Mm -hmm. Um, and we got to go in the back area where she makes, she's making an escape room sort of thing, kind of like a haunted little tour thing. And, uh, she says she hasn't really much felt anything there, but Jen and I, when we were up there, we felt some energy up there and, um, Jen felt a woman, um, possibly from the twenties. Um, that had taken her life by drinking poison. Mm. Um, but we, we ended up investigating and what actually came through, I believe was, uh, Zia. That's, that's her name. She's the owner of the shop. She asked for her cousin who had passed and it's a male and we got a, it's live. It's on my page right now. We investigated it. We got, we actually got a, this is really bad, a fart, like a, <laughs> like that. And it wasn't me, and it wasn't Jen, and it wasn't Zia, because I would have went, um, tag, you know. Um, we got a laugh, like a long, <laughs> laugh, a man's laugh. Um, and we captured some other things. And I went into the shop because I heard noises in there. And we had a ball in another room. And Jen captured on her full spectrum camera the ball rolling, coming down. It was rolling in the room and it rolled towards her. And she captured that on film, which is really cool. We didn't capture it on live because the camera wasn't pointed that way, but her camera was, which is really cool. Um, but yeah. We, we did that, and then uh, Sunday, I t- stayed home all day and took a nap on my coworkers, went and did a road trip, and then they came back and said, hey, Mesh, you want to, let's go have dinner, let's go do some seafood, so I'm like, okay, so we drove like 20 miles from Jefferson and went and had some uh, seafood, and on our way back, we stopped, every time we, we would go, we'd find like an old abandoned house. And and I got to take some photos. I didn't go in them because they didn't look too safe. Um, but they were amazing. And I will be posting those photos, too. So Well, you got to be careful in the South because posted means you can be shot. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We. <laughs> I no, I mean, that. yeah, it's my my family is actually from Virginia and West Virginia. So and, you know, you're not really that far from from anything there you know if you're looking for other yeah. parts of north carolina yeah you know asheville is about two hours away but you know you're in moonshine country yeah there there was a really really uh old old house looking shack thing um up in the hills um but i didn't i stood right by the fence i did not go past the fence 
it was on the side of the road and I took some photos. Um, I don't trespass. So no, no, none of us do. Uh, at least not knowingly. Yeah. Maybe nope. when we were younger, I mean, I, I have, I have said, yes, I did trespass when I was 12, uh, yeah. probably until I was about 15. But I mean, I even have a story to go with the one trespassing. Uh, this one was funny. We went, I climbed over the fence at Martin Marietta mm-hmm. and they were filming dog day afternoon. Okay. I know it's aging me and <laughs> I got yelled at by Al Pacino. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) But again, I did not realize that Martin Marietta was actually one of those military installation type buildings that you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be going onto their property. You can be Uh be shot. (laughs) And it was just right across the creek from our school. So it was like, I had no clue, you know, and I, and I admitted a few weeks ago to, uh, getting into sneaking into the Edgar Allan Poe house in in Baltimore. Oh boy. <laughs> when I was I was 12 as well. I was an unruly t- kid. I mean, I yeah. actually lived quite a distance from there and I still got in in there, but um it, it's it's weird, but you know, I don't know if you've ever been to to Maryland, but it is an unusual no. place to get to check out. So if you ever get to go back there, to you know, yeah. to go to like the Lord Baltimore Hotel, or because I know that Bill does um, investigations there. Yeah. I'd only ever been in their lobby because it was too fancy of a hotel when I was growing up to take a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll you go know. into places. I mean, I've been in places. If if I don't see if if I feel that this is it's dangerous, and and you know, I'm pretty smart. You know, I'm not going to do anything stupid. Um, I mean, if I see a building that's abandoned, I'll kind of like peek in and take some photos if there, I mean, there's been places over in Reno that, that I've been to, um, but I was gaining access to one place, but there is no, no, uh, private property, no trespassing signs, um, which, you know, cause it's a historical, it's been sitting there. They won't tear it down. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been in buildings, as long as they don't have no trespassing on them. If they have no trespassing, I stay the hell away. I'm like, yeah. nope, 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 nope. Have Have you ever investigated any cemeteries? I do. And I've captured some really cool stuff. Um, I was in a Jewish cemetery, actually, in Reno. And I was sitting on the grass next to the stone. Um, and it was nighttime, the grass was plush, um, it was just, it was a beautiful scene, um, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, you know, who's here with me, and I got on the voice recorder, a female saying, we lay here, and I was like, wow, you know, and and a lot of people say, oh, cemeteries, you can't catch nothing in cemeteries, I'll tell you what, if I was buried in a cemetery, I'd probably want to go, you know, you know, visit, seeing if how my grave looks, maybe see some family members possibly visiting me, um, you know, there's spirit everywhere, everywhere. You, can, I mean, I've walked in Walmart and stuff is flying up, flew off of shelves. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, they're everywhere. Why did you ask? Why do you ask? (laughs) So, yeah, I've been, I've had the same thing happen at Walmart. The stuff flies off the shelves sometimes when I walk down an aisle and. Oh, yeah. And it's strange when somebody else walks into the aisle and they see it and they're like, aren't you going to pick that up? And I'm like, I didn't do it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I was, I was in there with my mom and. My mom knows because it's in my family, the, the whole the whole metaphysical everything. And uh, we walked by in this, this it's like a cart with um, Lego blocks in it. The kids can pull it. Well, it was up on the second shelf and I was looking at this toys because I love toys. I'm a big kid. I collect toys. And um, my and the thing just flew off. And the Legos went everywhere. And my mom looked at me. And she goes, 
okay. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I went and picked it up. I've had bread flown off the thing. I mean, it's funny. Yeah. Like I said, it, I'm happy when it's bread because bread doesn't usually make a big sound. Yeah. <laughs> but it's in the canned food aisle that you're going to go on. Do you have to now? Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> I feel you. Um, how so. come you asked if I uh, investigated graveyards? Uh, because I know that there are some really unusual graveyards in Nevada. Oh, we've yeah. been we've been to well, we've been to the one in Good Springs. We've been in the the one in Tonopah. We've been to the one in Goldfield. Uh-huh. Um, we've we've only gotten as far north as Tonopah. And mostly because once you get so far, you got to go to Tonopah because you got to get gas to go back. Yeah. Um, yeah. My kids actually live in Vegas. So we when we drive out there, we don't go much further than Vegas because we've driven, you know, 1,400 miles already. We're not going to drive the extra, you know, four hours, five hours to get to, to Goldfield and Tonopah. Now, if we fly, there's a chance that we are. You know, there's been times where we've – we drove up to – um to Tonopah about four years ago and this poor lady had a flat and we happened to be in Goldfield and this guy who was fixing her tire he goes yeah he goes out here he goes we're the triple a so he gets he, and he's there right behind the um the old bank you know about two blocks away from the Goldfield hotel yeah and there's a little building there that used to be the telegraph office and he owned that building that had the telegraph office in it. And and it's still set up like it would have been like 1910. Yeah. And he goes, you, you can go in. I was like, oh, thank you. So I got my husband and my daughter and we went in and took pictures and got to, to check this place out while he was changing the tire. But, you know, nine times out of ten, you're not going to, I mean, in that area, you're not going to show up when people are there. Because there aren't yeah. any people really there. Um, but, yeah, we did check out a few things. But you know what? We're going to talk about Goldfield when we come back. You're listening to okay. WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. You're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but. Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHN Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hopson Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcast. Listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pride Moore. My guest tonight is Michelle LeBaron. And when we left off, we were talking, we were going to start talking about Goldfield and Tonopah area. Um, if you guys don't know where that is, it's it's in Nevada. It's, it's on a very desolate highway. <laughs> 
There's no gas station for a couple, you know, 90 miles or so. Very interesting uh, drive, actually. Uh, one of the most dangerous highways in the state. So we've done it enough times. You know, we've uh, we almost hit a donkey one night coming back. Aww. Well, you know, <laughs> after Beatty, you know, after yes. Beatty, you're in Area 51 territory. Yeah. And they had had a, um, when my daughter got married, the day after we, we, you know, she was on her honeymoon. So we, we left and we went on up to Tonopah. It was snowing. There was a windstorm. So there was also a dust storm and then NASCAR race was going on. So we really didn't plan on staying in Vegas. Yeah. And and by the time you get up, you know, over 7,000 feet, there was snow everywhere and it was really cold. And, uh, even for us that's used to the cold where we live in the wintertime and we get up to Tonopah and I'm, I'm walking around the cemetery and I'm taking pictures and, and chattering. I mean, my teeth were chattering really hard because oh, wow. we did, we didn't bring a coat because yeah. we had flown. Why, why would you bring a coat when you're flying and you're going to Vegas? You wouldn't think that it would be cold in March. Yeah. And <laughs> even though I know better now, um, so I've seen it snow real heavy in March. Oh yeah, me too. At yeah. this point, but I mean, so we go and we we're we're up there and we're going. Oh, I don't know where we're gonna. You know, we're gonna eat at Burger King. Where else are we gonna eat? It's Sunday night, huh? Maybe we should just go back to Vegas. So we we went back to Vegas that night. It was so dark on that road. I happened to look. I was looking, and there was a donkey that might have been six or seven inches from the car uh-huh. and we didn't hit it but you know since then though one of the big gas stations out there ex- they had a natural gas explosion caught on fire right across the street from the um the cat house oh out there the alien cat house was across yeah. was across the road and and it's sad that i know where the alien cat house is but how can you miss it it's, it says Area 51 convenience store. <laughs> it's very convenient. <laughs> yeah. So, but, very. But, you know, we, Especially we see... Especially for, for truckers. <laughs> yeah. It does have a very large parking lot. Um, oh, my goodness. It, it does have a clean restroom. You know, oh, well, but, that's a bonus. But it is fun walking through the store and seeing all the different things that they have that's alien-themed. I'll have to go there. Well, you, when you're when you're driving down 95, uh-huh. pretty easy to 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 see it all. But you know, it's just been an it's been interesting going up to Goldfield and and Tonopah, and I really enjoy the the Mitzpah Hotel. Yeah, I love that hotel. I just happened to walk up to the desk one 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 of the times that we were there, and. I asked the lady if it was okay if we we walked around. I said, you know, we're not looking to check in. I said, we just would like to look around. And, and she goes, well, would you like somebody to come and get? She goes, we'll bring down the, the, the main housekeeper. She can give you a tour and tell you about all the haunted places. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people ask me about the, the clown motel. Is it really haunted? I go, no, the clown motel is not haunted. It's just stupid looking. <laughs> <laughs> to me yeah it's not haunted the the graveyard just, on the other hand is interesting like, people don't like clowns and it just freaks them out i don't know why yeah i love clowns i i don't have a problem with it i think that they <laughs> could do their makeup a little nicer but you know but it is what it is <laughs> but you know we we really enjoy the his, historic parts of of tonopah and the you know, the history in the graveyard there, because in the graveyard, it actually, there are stories in the Tonopah graveyard. All you have to do is read. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's amazing how much is there, you know, like when you take pictures and you're going, why is there all this, you know, there's all these stones and then there's broken glass in there. I said, it's just add color. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of neat to see the difference in those old graveyards compared to the graveyards here in Kansas or back on the East coast, or even some of the ones up in, 
you know, Washington State and California, you know, you, you know, you've been to so yeah, many different it, ones. It's very, it's very, I've been to many cemeteries and many graveyards and, you know, in different states. And really a lot of them are, are different than others. I mean, the Nevada one, most of them is filled with uh, sagebrush and, and tan dirt because it's high desert. Um, and it's very Western looking, most of the cemeteries. You've got like wooden slats instead of, you know, the marble or, you know, headstones. They're just, it, it's, it looks like a Western movie graveyard, most of them. So. Yeah, some of them I saw had uh, tin and did tin punch. Which yeah, yeah. To put all the names on there. And they tell you how they died. I yep. mean, actually says on there, heart attack, uh, mind collapse, uh, things like that. Uh, it just made it made it all the more interesting. I've to... seen one in Tonopah, some guy choked on a chicken bone. Yeah. And yeah, then... it's, it's not too far from where the steps come down from the clown motel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow, really? Holy moly. <laughs> it was just his time to go, I guess. Yeah. But, but it's... When you've been down to Goldfield, you I knew that you had investigated at least one time mm -hmm. at the Goldfield Hotel. And I know for a lot of people, that is a location that's on their bucket list. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because Ghost Adventures went there or the different people that have gone and they've shared their pictures, which I've shared all my pictures of everything Goldfield, you know, the high yeah. school the graveyard you know outside <clears throat> of the building i've never been able to get into the building uh at the hotel and i know you've investigated there yeah you know it it is it is active um and and i'm gonna tell you guys a quick story i don't know how much time i have you um, have at least eight minutes okay oh uh, seven um, i did go in with a group of friends and um, I did capture um, an unexplained anomaly. Uh, uh, it looked like part human, part light. Um, and that's in my presentation. Um, hopefully, I think I'll be on a show on Wednesday and they'll be showing some of my paranormal evidence. And I think that one's in it. But um, I actually always told myself, I'll never get attached. Um, I became attached in that place and I was downstairs in the basement area and, and the spirits there weren't very happy at the time because they're reconstructing everything. They're making it into a, a brand new hotel. Um, they're tearing down walls they're putting new walls up, um, all that stuff. They're, um, changing everything. So they're not very happy. Um, but I was attached and I didn't remember almost the whole type of the attachment that I had. Um, I was downstairs in the basement with my friends and this is what they told me that happened. Um, I, my friend felt something tap her on the head and she looked up and there, there was like this light fixture, but it was way too high for it to hit her head. She's like, Whoa. And I guess they were, we were doing an EVP session and I slumped down and sat on the floor, had my head down, and my friend Sierra's like, Mish, are you okay? And I wouldn't talk to her, and I had my head down. And um, we actually, this is what happened before that happened. I'm trying to hurry. We played the EVP recorder back, and it said, a man's voice came through, and it said, I'm going to get her, like that. So I'm sitting on the floor. My head is tilt downward. And my friends all mish. And I turn my head really slow and I look at her. And I, my face was like pale white. Veins were popping out of my face. My eyes were black. And she said she's never been so scared in her whole life. She said that I looked, I didn't look like myself. And that I looked like I wanted to kill her. Oh, no. And um, so I got up and I rushed down the hall <laughs> and they were doing the EVP session and I walked over and I grabbed my K2 meter off the floor and I took off 
And then I went downstairs. This is what everyone's telling me. And I flung open the door, the, the front door of the gold field. And I went outside and a friend of mine came in or came out there and talked to me. And I guess I said some pretty, <laughs> <laughs> I, I said some really, really, really bad things. And I wasn't aware of it. And so then rumors came about saying that I pretend I was attached because I wasn't able to use my spirit box. Um, I had my spirit box on. It was too loud. I made the decision to turn it off out of respect for everybody else. And I wasn't upset about it. And they thought that, that that's why I was, I pretended that I was attached to get attention and it's like whatever you know and now I'm not friends with these people because of the lies and the stuff that they said I had proof from my friends my best friend and my other good friend who saw me and what happened they were there these people were not so and but that's that's how it is but I did get attached in that building and it was a nasty attachment. Nasty. So. Um, so do yeah. you. Do you think that there. Okay. Since you got a nasty attachment. Do you think that there's something. Very dark in that building. There was at the time. But I'm every time I've been there. I never felt it. But I think with with everybody. at I mean. And at that point too. Everyone was at each other's throats. There was nothing but negativity. Everyone was yelling at each other. Everybody was saying, I'm leaving. And I'm just like, whoa, you know, it was, it was bad. You, you've got to make sure when you're going into a haunted location that you go in with people that you vibe with and they have good intentions for you and for others. And they're good people, plain and simple. I won't go anywhere in a building with someone I don't know. And I don't vibe with. That's just how I roll now. So, would would you suggest protection for people that are going par- out investigating? Every every time, any time, and every time. Doesn't matter when, where, where you're at. You do it. Ground yourself. Shield yourself. You know. Pray if you pray. Um, always have protection. Never go in. Not not uh, guarded. So. I can see that. Do you have a suggestion on the best way to protect yourself? Um, I pull the light from the ground up and I cover my body. Um, I also use different types of crystals. Uh, black tourmaline to keep away negativity. I'll keep a, a stone in my pocket. I have a regular uh, quartz crystal necklace that I wear for protection. It's all faith, too. I mean, yeah. you just, you know, I'm protected. I'm protected by God. I'm protected by my goddess. I'm protected by the light. I mean, that it's, it's, you got to just have faith that you will be protected when you do it. And usually it works. <laughs> well, you know what? We are at our next break. This is going to be the long news break. So, everyone, you're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. We will be back with Michelle and just, you know, after the break. If you have any questions for Michelle, please put them in the chats and I will make sure I, I ask them. I do see the questions out there and they will be asked after the break. So, I hope you guys are enjoying yourself and we'll talk to you in just a few. Live from NPR News, I'm Jack Spear. Two experimental coronavirus vaccines are entering an advanced phase of testing. As NPR's Joe Palco reports, the goal of the latest trials is to determine if the vaccines actually prevent the disease. One vaccine comes from a collaboration between the National Institutes of Health and the U.S. biotech company Moderna, the other between the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer and the German company BioNTech. Both are so-called mRNA vaccines, an approach that involves vaccinating people with snippets of genetic material that can stimulate an immune response. Both vaccines have undergone preliminary safety testing in people. Now the idea is to show they actually work to prevent people from getting sick. Researchers say each vaccine will have to recruit as many as 30,000 volunteers to show that. 
Joe Palka, NPR News. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is calling on Republicans and the White House to negotiate with Democrats in terms of the next coronavirus relief package. Pelosi is saying that time is running out because federal unemployment assistance and an eviction moratorium expire at the end of this week. Republicans, meanwhile, introduced their proposal dubbed the HEALS Act. It would significantly reduce the $600 a week many out-of-work Americans are getting on top of state benefits. The GOP plan would focus on getting children back to school, Americans back to work, and protecting companies from lawsuits. It would also include another $1,200 stimulus check. As the nation continues to mourn, the late Congressman John Lewis, Emma heard from member station WABE in Atlanta reports, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp is scheduled the election to decide who will fill out the rest of Lewis's term. The special election is set for September 29th, but unless the person who wins that special election is State Senator Nakima Williams, they will not be eligible to serve past January. That's because Williams is the Democratic nominee on the November ballot. The state Democratic Party chose her as the replacement nominee for Lewis last week. If the September special election race is close, there will be a December runoff, which means the people of the 5th District could be without a representative for months. Lewis was re-elected 16 times to the seat with overwhelming majorities. His funeral will take place in Atlanta Thursday morning. For NPR News, I'm Emma Hurt in Atlanta. Maine Senator Susan Collins has become the second Republican to come out against the nomination of Judy Shelton, President Donald Trump's latest pick to join the powerful Federal Reserve Board. Shelton has openly called for the Fed to be less independent in the political branches and has even questioned the need for a central bank. Senator Mitt Romney of Utah has also said he'll oppose Shelton's nomination. Shelton's nomination was approved by a narrow vote in the Senate Banking Committee last week along party lines. Her nomination now faces a full Senate vote. Stocks resumed their upward rise today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 114 points. The Nasdaq was up 173 points. The S&P rose 23 points today. You're listening to NPR. A senior National Guard officer is challenging the narrative of the Trump White House, saying police began the violent clearing of protesters from Washington's Lafayette Square last month without a fair apparent provocation or adequate warning. Army National Guard Commander Adam DeMarco's account challenges a key aspect of the Trump administration's explanation for the clearing of the protesters. Just before President Trump walked along the area to St. John's Church for a photo op holding a Bible. The Trump administration has said attacks by protesters warranted the use of force. DeMarco says the protest appeared peaceful. Belgium's coronavirus infection rate has risen dramatically, prompting the government there to enact strict limits on social contacts for at least the next month. From Brussels, Terry Schultz explains the prime minister says she's trying to avoid another complete lockdown. Belgian Prime Minister Sophie Wilmes says she's very concerned about the rise in infections, particularly in Antwerp, Belgium's largest city, where the number of coronavirus cases surged 520 percent last week. After a meeting of the National Security Council, Wilmes announced residents may no longer have contact with 15 different people per week. Starting Wednesday, she says, each person may see only five other people outside their household for the next four weeks. Private events, including weddings and funerals may have 10 attendees. Grocery shopping must be done alone in 30 minutes or less. If the rules are not obeyed, Wilmes says, previous lockdown measures, including store closings and home confinement, may come back. For NPR News, I'm Terry Schultz in Brussels. Oil prices closed higher up 31 cents a barrel to 41.60. I'm Jack Spear, NPR. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is five minutes after the hour. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight is Michelle LeBaron. And I'm going to wait to ask Ron's question because he's not in here to hear it, so... Um, I'm going to ask Gary's question. Gary asks, do you use uh, Echo Box or dowsing rods? I actually use the Echo Box, um, and I do use dowsing rods. I use them both. I use a lot of different types of methods. I use, um, like I've said, I've used, I use the old, older methods, the newer methods, you know, the old school, new school, technical, all that stuff. So 
I pretty much use it all. I use the applications, the ITC applications, um, spirit boxes. Yeah, I do. What is your favorite spirit box type equipment? Um, I actually was given the wonder box from a wonderful friend of mine that decided to go into real estate and she didn't want it. So she said, if anyone in the field deserves it, it's you, Mish. And she gave it to me and I just bawled. I cried. And actually, I've gotten some pretty amazing stuff on that. I mean, the Wonder Box is pretty much a glorified amplifier with guitar pedals, Mm -hmm. you know, um, with uh, copper wires and crystals. Um, The ITC applications that I like to use. The best is Spiritus. Um, if you go on my uh, paranormal page, you'll see that I was using the Spiritus application on my Wonder Box, and um, the spirit, a female, came through and said my full name, Michelle LeBaron. And I about freaked out. I'm like, oh my God, like that. And I, I said, you know, thank you. Thank you so much. I said, C- can you can you say my name again? Please say it again. And she said it twice. She goes, Michelle LeBaron, right after I asked her. So that was like an amazing, special moment for me. Uh, the Spiritus is amazing application. And the Chill Seekers makes that. And I believe you can buy that on iPhone and Android. Yep. Have, have you used Necrophonic at all? Yes, I have that. Because I think it's made by the same people. Yes. And I've gotten, actually, I I, I do TikToks. And I posted uh, one of my videos. I was at a a place called the Truckee Meadows Murder House. Mm -hmm. Truckee River Murder House in Reno. Um, That's what they call it. It wasn't someone murdered there. It's just some, you know, folklore thingy. But, uh, um. It said my name. It goes, Mish, 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 like that, right when I turned it on. And I posted that, and I got over, like, 90,000 views on that video. (laughs) Uh, Well, you know, when you deserve it, when it says something amazing comes out Mm -hmm. that can't possibly be built in. Yeah, um, no, because I don't know them. And usually when I, when I use these applications, I, I don't use anything with email or, or, um, my personal information because LeBaron is my maiden name. I'm not known as Michelle LeBaron. I'm known as Michelle LeBaron in the field, but I have a different name, um, that I use and, uh, no, there's no way, there's no way that because people are like oh it must have been stored in your tablet no it isn't because there's nothing in my tablet that says my name and and i don't use facebook i don't use messenger i don't use any type of social media on that tablet it's right. strictly nothing but applications just like mine if it yeah. says if it says the name denise yeah it's not in there anywhere but and my first name is something totally and utterly different that yeah nobody I mean unless you know me well yeah you don't know that I don't go by my first name yeah i go by my middle name and and it's not any secret what it is it's just i don't all my you know everything i do is ld ld mm-hmm. and it doesn't have my my full name in it cuz i yeah. keep and i keep that tablet separate from everything it doesn't have internet it only has wi-fi at home yep that's so, what i got so needless to say it doesn't it doesn't triangulate well when it's always has location off it just yeah. makes me laugh oh it, it you got it off your t- yeah okay i'll show you i have proof you know yeah. that there's nothing that states michelle LeBaron on any piece of my equipment except for my social media on my phone or on my computer computer that's right. it and that's so. diff- that's like i said that's how we are i'm very pic- particular since i know how code is written 
Yes. I look for stuff to see what's built in. And if there and, are and, words built in, then I go, this is crap. Yeah. And, and then you got the chill seekers. They don't know me. I mean, personally, they didn't know me four years ago when they made it. I mean, why would they put Michelle LeBaron in it? You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> so I, I, I love it when it does that all the time. It makes me happy. Yeah. It's, it's always interesting when you, when your name comes up. Well, yep. no, especially when it's more than one syllable. Yep. So it's, it's exciting. It is. And so I'm now going to ask you Ron's question. Ron asks, why would things fall off the shelves when you walk down the aisle? Probably maybe the spirit knows that I know that they're there or to get my attention because they know who I am. They see my light. They're like, oh. She's a person that likes to communicate and talk and see spirits. So they do stuff like that to get my attention. The bad part is, is when they do it at Walmart, they don't realize we can't pay attention. Yeah. Because the people are watching us over the, over the cameras and they're going to go, this woman's nuts. Yeah. Whether we are or not, it may, remains to be seen, but you know. Yeah. I like to be, I love who I am. So do I. I, 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 I like who you are too. And, and I, you know, you. I, I just don't want the attention when I'm at Walmart. I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing stuff. You know, yeah. not now. Yeah, not... I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? <laughs> yeah. The, what has been the strangest place that you have had paranormal activity that you didn't expect? The strangest place. Well, it would be strange to you because you weren't expecting it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, geez, uh, in in a hotel room, you know. Um, we well, it's actually not a strange thing because usually, well, I I was in a room with my friends, and uh, we were looking out the window, and I had Spiritus going. And, well, actually, we're sitting there and we turned it on just for hell, you know, just for giggles, you know. Um, And uh, it goes, go to the window. We're like, okay. So we go to the window. And then uh, my friend goes, who am I? And it goes, Lisa. And I go, who am I? And it goes, Michelle. And we're like, oh, my God. (laughs) And then we're thinking, you know, most people, when they commit suicide, a lot of people do them in hotels. They'll, like, go away and get a room and do their thing. There's there's a lot of deaths in hotels and motels. So, yeah, I've, I've had, even when I got in this room, um, weird noises at night, you know, things being moved. I've woken up a couple times. Last night, I woke up at 12, 1, 2, and 3. On the dot. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And and I've never done that before. So, yeah. I mean, this town that I'm in right now is like one of the most haunted counties in North Carolina. So. It is. It does have a huge history of of paranormal as well as a lot of. Well, there's a lot of murders in that county yeah. Yeah. Um, that have been unsolved. And based on my family history, I'm going to go with it. it was probably family, <laughs> not my family, but yeah, you know, family. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of things to be said about um, that area. My, like I said, I know that there's a lot of moonshiners also in that county. Yeah. Like I said, I know a little bit more than I probably should. Well, but... we were driving down a country road and, Bam, smelt marijuana. And I'm thinking, uh, well, it's pretty plush out here. <laughs> you know? Well, it, there is a lot of places that you could hide it out there, yeah. from at least from the road, but not from the air. Yeah. So, and it, I was looking at the map of where, where you're actually at. And mm-hmm. it's almost straight, straight south of Whiteville, Whiteville depending upon how you say it. My mom always goes, it's white. It's Withville. It's Withville. I'm like, "Mm, okay, whatever. (laughs) Like, 
I, I don't. She goes, you're too Baltimore. I like, I, I know. It, it is what it is. But you know, I just always laugh about all the the different places that there is down there that you can go and visit and stuff. And the other thing is, is the roads. They're all twisty turny, except for the interstates. But they're yeah. all twisty turny, and you're making these. I. I I always called them kiss your ass turns. Yeah. Because you know, you'd come around it and you can see the back side of the car as you're coming around with the front side. <laughs> yeah. Pretty <laughs> and, much. Or the, my, my mom used to live in Eastern Kentucky. So about, mm, about probably an hour, no, about two hours from, from where you're at. So it, yeah. I, it's sad. I know. I know approximately the area very well, but I knew the history because of stuff that people had told me when I would go down there to visit. It's and, uh, it's definitely a different energy. I mean, it to sometimes to a point where I feel uncomfortable, and I'm not sure. Just the the energy feel. I can't explain it. Like in certain areas when I'm walking around, or I'm I'm not like happy. I mean, really, I've been here. I haven't been, like, my happy, happy self. Yeah. Um, which is very bizarre. So. Well, it's probably the stress of being, first of all, so far away from home. You're yeah. also three time zones away from where you're used to, getting <laughs> used to that. And then there's not always the same. There's no familiar res places to eat. No, oh, it's just, and it's horrible. But Bojangles I mean, is good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I I went to Bojangles. I didn't like it. I was like, uh, Ugh. oh, and it's like Rhonda. everybody likes biscuits here. Yeah, I mean it's biscuit this and biscuit that. I'm all, oh, I don't like biscuits. Well, you know, you can also <laughs> get fried bologna, sa fried bologna sandwiches down in that area too. <laughs> oh, I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. At the convenience stores. So actually I had something really good tonight. Um, there's a place called um Ashu O S H U. It's a new Japanese restaurant here. And I have filet mignon and and uh, uh what is it? Uh lobster grilled oh. with uh, with shrimp sauce and fried rice and oh my gosh, it was what? like was Woo! this a hibachi, a hibachi restaurant? Yes. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. That's the first so place good. I ever had lobster was a hibachi restaurant. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. Uh, the green tea ice cream is good if they have it. Oh, I love that. I like eating that after I eat a whole bunch of sushi. Oh, kinda yeah. kind of helps my tummy. <laughs> yeah. My husband doesn't care for Bojangles either, but when we're by one, I always make him stop. Yeah, I just, because I wasn't. Well, it's wasn't. a it's a memory for me. Yeah, you know because we didn't have Popeyes when I was growing up. We had Bojangles. So yeah. when I see one, we go. I go. We have to stop. And the closest one to us is Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm not too into it. I mean, I saw a lot of cars there, and I was like, oh, I gotta try that place. Oh my gosh. And then I did, I was like, eh, the coleslaw was good, but I wasn't really fond of it. There's just so much fried food too. It I is. Gained like 10 pounds. And, and I was telling my friend today, I was like, um, I'm just going to start eating salads for the rest of the week. They're probably I mean, fried too. <laughs> oh God. It's just, everything is fried. I just like, ugh. It kind of makes me sick to my stomach a little well, bit. And if you get grits, they're covered in butter. So, oh. you still, so but everyone, we're going to go take our next break. You're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. We'll be back with Michelle in just a few minutes. You're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama.
several U.S. presidents are on record talking about the UFO mystery. Yep. Presidents Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, both had UFO sightings of their own, but the current presidential campaign might be the first in which UFO disclosure has been championed by a major party candidate. DIA, CIA, it moves around, is operating a program to train psychic spies to spy and use their powers against Russia. John Ronson writes about this in The Men Who Stare at Goats. The first known sighting of a ghost took place right after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated uh, in the late 1860s during the administration of Ulysses Grant. Project Paperclip, Clinton releases it all in 1998. Possibly the unequal cooling of its surface. I say to you, still think it's a meteor, Professor. I don't know what to think. The uh, metal casing is definitely extraterrestrial. It's a place where UFO hunters and scientists gather to examine paranormal activity in the region. Some of the documents, this is bringing Nazi scientists into the United States to work here. So we fought against the Nazis, and it's not, this again is not a revelation. As early as 1947, 1946, we knew some of this, right? On the paranormal, will we see U.S. President Barack Obama's foreign policy go intergalactic in a quest for gold stolen by aliens? We'll tell you at least how the White House responded to claims the chief executive has been teleporting to Mars. But let's get to today's Capital Account. UFOs. Hauntings. Psychic abilities. Conspiracy. ESP. Cryptozoology. There are many things that remain unexplained in the inexplicable world around us. And we're talking about them here, looking for answers on WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. The truth is out there. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore. I hope everybody is enjoying Michelle, because I know I am, and I know Kat is. So, um, so, okay, we've been talking about some of the places out near where you live, and some. where are some of the places that you've been that you think everybody should go if they're in, if they're into the paranormal? Well, the first thing is... Um, Washoe Club, for sure, um, in Virginia City, Nevada, is my most awesome place. I mean, anywhere I've been. I've been all over the United States to different haunted locations, but Washoe Club is so near and dear to my heart. I mean, I know the spirits there. They know me. Um, it's an amazing place. It never disappoints. Um, and there is also the Mackey Mansion. I thought, you know, uh, there's the Mackey Mansion. Yeah, I know it's been on shows and everything, but I had to see for myself. And uh, I went with a group from Utah. They invited me, and we were down in the parlor, and we could hear children running up and down the, the hall laughing. This is like 11 o'clock at night, and we captured that. Um, I also was with my teammate, um, Lisa Ludwig and mm -hmm. my best friend, um, we did a reap investigations, um, ITC application, which is children voice banks. And we had the, the docent, the lady that runs the, the Mackey mansion with us. And, um, I, I did, we didn't know that they're the names of the children that supposedly were there at the time. And, we played the the the, the um, application, and my friend Lisa was singing "Ring Around the Rosie." And then after she did that, a young voice came through and said, "Ashes, 
ashes like that. And that's on my page too, if you're interested in seeing that. Um, but it was communicate. They were communicating with us. Um, and they said that their name was Emma and Peter and the lady that runs the Mackie mansions was blown away because that was the name of the children that had died there from an illness. Oh, wow. Oh, it, it's mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. We were just there last week with the reap investigations, uh, team, uh, Nevada and California chapter and got some amazing things. Um, there was a pink ball out in the hall and we couldn't find it. And we went into the kids room and the ball was on the other side of the bed and there was no way because we were all together and something had to have picked it up because there was stuff under the bed. So it couldn't have been kicked under the bed. It was mm -hmm. physically picked up and brought around and dropped. And so at, before we went up there to look for the ball, we were doing a session and there were all, they're all, would you like to play hide and seek? So what they were doing, their form of hide and seek was hiding that ball from us. So when, oh, we, wow. went, so when we went upstairs and finally found that ball and went back downstairs and one of our, one of our members, I forgot who said it, but they're like, who moved that ball? And then you had this little girl come out and she goes, Nick did it. So there's another child named Nick there, like a little prankster. But it was just absolutely amazing what we captured there. So, yeah, that's that's a, a, a pretty cool place. Um, I love the Belair house. I've had some pretty amazing stuff happen there. That's in Belair, Belair Ohio. Mm-hmm. Um, Vulture City in Vulture City, uh, Wickenburg, Arizona. It's an old mining town and there's 13 buildings. We got some pretty amazing stuff in the brothel. Um, we only went in, we were only able to get to two buildings when we were at the event last year mm -hmm. and we still didn't get through the 11 that was there. And that place was highly active and i highly recommend that if if you ever hear about the vulture city paracon go to it you would not be disappointed it's amazing amazing so those are my those are my top choices that i love well i tell you, i've been invited down to vulture city a few times it's just yeah. it's so far off the road yeah you know um we and I've met the um, uh, Marie and Jay and Jay. Is. Yeah. Yep. Met them, and they were great guests to have on the show. And uh, Vanessa Hogel is a good friend of mine. She's supposed mm -hmm. to be down there this year for their event, and uh, I hope I hope it goes off. You know, I hope they have the event. So. Is there any events that you were supposed to speak at this year besides the one we've already talked about <laughs> that you haven't been able to make because of the the uh, virus? Actually, I am one of the headline speakers for Vulture City. Um, I did it last year and I was invited back this year. Um, I'm speaking um, there and I'm also going to be with the REAP team um, and I had an event this August, the 21st. I was supposed to go to Washington, Chalice, Washington, to help um, fund and restore a museum in Washington. And it was a paranormal event with the Reaps, Phil and Chris, um, Jay and Marie and myself. Mm -hmm. um, but that got canceled. It's in Washington um, due to COVID. So... Um, they had to push that up, I believe, June of next year. So, and other than that, I'm just going to do some investigating with my team, the REAP Investigations West Coast Branch, mm -hmm. uh, California and Nevada chapter. We're going to do some things, you know, together. Um, I don't think a whole hell of a lot right now because of the COVID until it subsides, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, well, 
Well, I hope that the the Vulture City one goes off since it's most you know a lot of that's outside. Hopefully, it will. Yeah, Arizona's been very picky though. You know, um, they've got a lot of uh, cases. Well, New Mexico says that the world's out to get them, so it's <laughs> that's right next door. Um, yeah. I remember I was reading something about that. And it's like, well, thank goodness we're not. You know. Well, we are plan. We do plan on staying in New Mexico, but they may not allow us to. Yeah, because we're from I Kansas. Mean, I'm. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't go. But if it didn't, you know, there's always next year. So, oh yeah, because I know that yeah. some of the events that we, well, all the events we planned on going to so far this year have been canceled. Um, of course, my husband limits me to two, so. Um, cause he, well, he doesn't care for the events. Yeah. Me on the other hand, I'm a social person. I've gotten more and more less social since, you know, been working from home since 2007. So I don't see people a lot. Wow. Yeah. So this is, all this stuff is not new to me. You know, all the stuff everybody's just learning to live with is, is normal for me. Um, I don't see people Monday well, Sunday through through Friday, most days. I see people on Saturday, and that's it. And we're we're rural enough to where I don't have to deal with a lot of the stuff that's going on. Yeah. And and we do drive everywhere, so we've got a good chance of of missing out on a lot of stuff because of that. But the only one event that we've been talking about going to. Well, I've been talking about going to. My husband's been going, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> it's been the Van Meter Festival in Van Meter, Iowa. And so, hmm. uh, but, you know, it's all outside. Well, I if you do ever get a chance to go to the Vulture City Paracon, I'm going to tell you it's probably, I've been to many, and I can tell you this, that it is top notch. It is one of the best events I've ever been to, and it was put on very, very well, very professional. There was, um, it was a very positive event. There was no chaos, no anger, no, no, you know, none of that. It was just an amazing experience that I, I, I did last year, and I just absolutely loved it. And I highly recommend anybody who hears about the the vulture paracon vulture city paracon you have to go you have to we we've talked like i said we we've talked to jay and marie and really interested in going it's just a matter that when we we're we're one of those people that it's when we go on a trip it has to involve family yeah you know and sometimes getting from point a to point b can be a lot of fun or it can be stressful. <laughs> yeah. It depends on which way we go. And so if we took a, went across I-10, you know, went down further south and across I-10, Vulture City's right off of it. It's not too bit, bad. And I have family in Tucson and and I've been invited <laughs> down to Tombstone. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, Many times. Goodness. Yeah, I want to go pretty bad. Um, my friends, D- Rhonda and Dwight Hull, put on an event there. The Usually it's the first first or second weekend in May. And it's a haunting in the desert is Ooh, what they cool. call it. And they get really good turnout. And we she, they keep telling us, you come down, I'll, we'll take you all the places that the tourists don't get to see. And I was like, I'm hoping it's not the dumpster out back. Oh, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but they they know I'm goofy anyway, but it it's you know one of those things I want to go down there, but it's still what's more important going to see my granddaughter or going to this this event where there's people I might might really enjoy meeting. You know. Wow. So well, the grand for... the granddaughter wins out every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so family first. That's right, because, you know, we we all know that, you know, we love our family, but we also need to take time to visit those friends that we love. Yeah, it's 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 so awesome when you get to meet, you know, people that you, you know, spoke to or 
you know, you know, text back and forth from Facebook. You know them. You've seen mm-hmm. their videos. You've seen their their posts, and then you finally get to meet them face to face, and it's like, oh my gosh, family. You know, it, it's amazing. I love yeah. it. It was funny. We showed up at this one event a couple years ago, the Haunted Road Media Paracon in Alton, and I. I'm still standing there and all you hear is my people yelling out my name and I've never, you know, I'd never met these people in person before. Uh They'd only seen me on Facebook. And I was like, I didn't realize that people were excited to see me, you know, and because I I am modest, Uh I'm extremely modest and I don't think that I'm important to other people, but I, my husband kept teasing me on the way there. He goes, he kept saying, well, don't you know who I am? And I'm like, I'm not doing that. He did it at the hotel. He, he did it everywhere. Ah, that's you know funny. Who I am. And then we get into this event. Everybody knew who I was, and all I could do was laugh because he'd kept going around, going, "Don't you know who I am?" The whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I and if anybody comes up to me, I I hug them. I hug everybody. You know, it's hard um, right now, though. Isn't it? It's very very hard. Everyone likes to have my hugs. They think it's very, very, uh, um, what would you call it? Um, special. Healing. And healing. Special. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you trained at all in, in Reiki? Um, no, but, you know, I, I did go to a Reiki course with a Reiki master. Um, and we did a, a thing where... Um, he would walk by and he would put his hand above their heads and give them a color. And he stopped by me and was there for a while. (laughs) He's like feeling my energy. And he goes, you're a healer. He goes, would you consider, you know, training under me? And I'm like, I don't want to do this. (laughs) You know? But then it kind of dawned on me that when people hug me, they hug me for a long time and I can feel their energy and they can feel mine. And, and, and I, there's times where I pull like negative energy from, from people. I can feel it and I pull it and they're just, they're, they're light and they're happy because of it. It's just weird. I can't explain but yeah, I guess I I do have healing properties in my, in my energy, but I just I don't want to call myself a Reiki master or anything like that. I mean, it's just I do it because I love to hug and I love to give people my my positive energy. I a lot of a lot of people need that. Yeah, people do need positivity, especially in this negative time, and. Yeah. Ron asked, can you heal shingles? <laughs> um, no. No. <laughs> take 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 a I don't know, a nice hot bubble bath with some calamine and I don't know. Actually um, the hot bath is the worst thing you can do. So just so you'll well, know then, with well, then a don't warm take bath. A hot bath. See, take a I nice warm know. bath. Yeah. That <laughs> well here you'll learn something. Yeah. You got shingles, you take a nice warm bath with oatmeal you know with colladio oatmeal and Ugh. that should help add some it, maple brown sugar maple well brown sugar he'll add bourbon that'll be <laughs> but, but right now he can't do that because he's got an ant he's on that ant- antiviral oh, for, God. for it. Poor but guy. We, yeah he uh-huh. like i said before he's to you guys off offline you well, know, tell him they don't want me I'm to get sick. Sending him positive healing energy his way right now. Yo, know, he's hearing you. He's okay. he listens to the show every every time. When he's not <laughs> listening, I can tell because he's got other he's got other things going on. He'll be listening, but he won't be chatting or anything. <laughs> so, but he's asking questions, so he's paying attention. Well, that's good. But so, I can't. I'm sorry, Ron. I wish I, I could for you. We all do. Because, you know, nothing's worse than your husband being sick. Oh, that's not good. I'd much rather me be sick than him. But mm-hmm. I got the, I got all the time in the world to, I can work, since I work from home, I don't have to leave if I don't feel good. 
But yeah. the last time I had shingles, I couldn't work for two weeks. I was in too oh much pain. My. So well, I, I did don't go. Want that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did go to Seattle though after my sores healed up. So which okay. I didn't have too many, but yeah, shingles suck. And you know, yes, I know there's a vaccine, but it's not proven to not cause you to have to not cause you to not get the shingles. You can still yeah. get them. So, <laughs> but you know, that's me. You know, we're we're gonna all learn. So. Do you have a bucket list location? I know everybody has one. You've got to have one. Mine is St. Albans. Oh. I want it bad. It calls me. I dream about it. Did you so, see how far it was from you? Um, Isn't it like an hour away from me? Bradford, Virginia. I think, I think so. It's like 83 miles or something like that, which is really sucky because I want to go. But you have to pay money to get in there, and I don't have that kind of cash flow to get in there. So You um, should you should, should contact Holly Mullins. She could probably get you in there for free. Oh, my Holly. Yes, I she should. does. She's about two hours from you because um, yeah, she, she lives just south of my mom. Actually, Misty actually messaged me yesterday. She goes, girl, do you know how far you are from me? <laughs> like, no. Well, yeah, I've done the well, same thing with Holly. I would go visit my mom in, in Virgie and she lived just down the road in Norton and, or actually just before the, the Kentucky, Virginia state line, she lived on the Kentucky side, just uh-huh. right down the road. And we still, every time I would show up, her grandfather would get sick. Mm. And, and it's like, oh, well, you know, there's not much I can do about that, you know, so, cause, and I was there, of course, to visit family, but if I could have seen her, I would have, I saw her the first time in Alton last year. So, but you know what, we're coming up on our last break. So everybody, if you have any questions at all to ask <laughs> Michelle, this is your last chance. Yeah. Uh, so you're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting in Birmingham, Alabama. Please go take your break, get a drink. Just make sure you come back because we'd like to hear what you have to, what questions you have. So come on back now. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHN Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal. From ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond, you'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm your host, Denise Pridemore, and my guest tonight is Michelle LeBaire. And Michelle, where can people find you if they wanted to find you? Um. 
I am on Facebook and I am on Instagram. Look up uh, Ghost Magnet um, or Michelle LeBaron, L-E-B-A-R-O-N. Um, I also have a REAP Investigations West Coast group page, uh, uh, Nevada, California chapter. You guys can go on there and eventually here real soon, we're getting this up and running. Um, you can um, join and we will accept your invite or we'll accept you depending if you are a bully or a bad person, I will decline you like that. No questions asked. So, Well, the good news is if you've already blocked them, they can't request anyway. No, it's, it's a different, it's, it's a, it's not my page. Oh no. Yeah. So I've had people pop up and I've declined them and you know, I don't care really. I don't need that kind of stuff on, on that page. So we monitor who we let in that group um, and we will um, be doing Facebook live investigations um, on there real soon um, with uh, other teams. We're going to um, highlight other teams, highlight par- other paranormal investigators that nobody really knows about. And, oh, that's uh, good. You know, just bring them out and say, hey. Let's investigate and, you know, highlight them. Um, We're going to do that. We're going to do a lot of investigations with the REAP investigations team back east and west and California and Midwest. Uh, I believe Scotty Rourke is heading up the Midwest and uh, Mike Gallant is doing the east, lower east, I think, or south. And then we've got Bill and Chris. Um. There are mama and papa bear. We love them. (laughs) But uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. So just keep your eyes open. Well, I am sharing these also with in the, uh, in the chat room so that people can just click on them and go. And uh, the reap, the R E A P R period E period a period. P period investigation West Coast group page mm-hmm. is different from our West Coast other page. Um, right. So, um, have you have a you have a group, group page and you have a you have a group page and a page page. Yes. Yes. So yeah, I found both of those. Awesome. So and I we shared, also shared have those. Uh, uh, two guys paranormal, um, which is another. Uh, page that uh, the California branch has. They have a separate investigation team as well as REAP Investigations California branch. So they're pretty cool. You guys will like that. Are you you part of a a team all the time or are you sometimes just a solo investigator? Um, I am a solo person but um, I have my best friend who is Lisa Ludwig, we do a lot of things together solo and not with the team. Um, I get asked to do things. uh, She gets asked to do things. um, But, you know, we do do group stuff too. Um, But I can't help that I'm being asked to go clear across the United States to investigate with somebody. So sometimes I do do the solo thing. Um, but I am doing more of the team thing this coming year and next year. Um, I will be speaking at a couple events by myself, but I really would like to get this, this, this team thing going and, and, you know, promoting and collaborating with other teams and individuals, you know, that's what our plan is. So you believe in, so do you believe in pair unity or do you just believe in unity period? I believe in uh, there. Is, I do believe in pair unity, but the only way you're going to get that is if you like, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really like the pair unity thing. I don't because there's so much competition, so many egos out there. Um, everybody's, you know, there's a lot of people with motives and wrong motives. Um, and 
I do believe in unity with the people that I vibe with and the people that I know personally mm-hmm. and I and I and I've investigated with I will investigate but if I have some type of weird energy um coming towards me or or not not feeling right about a certain person uh, I won't work with them uh, that's one of the things that I use my gut to tell me yep who, my intuition who... I, I swear, my intuition has never been wrong. Never. Anytime I've thought of something or, or felt something about somebody, but try to give them the benefit of the doubt, because I always want to see the good in them, mm-hmm. and they turn around and they they crap on me. And yep. I won't do that anymore. It and no bitch more. in the butt. Yep. Nope. We had, I always questioned mine until one time we were, we had test drove a vehicle and we were going to go back the next day. It was too late to do any paperwork. And on the way home, both my husband and I got stomach aches and, and we decided we couldn't buy that vehicle because of that. And it was good that we didn't because it was a, it was a stick and I was not a very good stick driver. I still ain't, but, but, but we knew at that point, that we couldn't buy that vehicle because we both got physically ill. Yeah. So always, always go with your gut feeling. You, you have a feeling about somebody. There's something just not anything quite right about them. Go with it. Yeah. There's been times where I've had that feeling and I was wrong Uh on, on a couple people, but maybe it was because those people did change from the first time I met them to later possibly, on. Possibly, yes, possibly. Because, you know, you re- sometimes you regret those snap decisions that you make from your gut. Well, I, I've just been through way too much. I know. I am very, very cautious of people and their motives. I, so, I don't blame you there. I really I've don't. Been, I've been just totally... Um, hurt and it's uh, I just I can't do it anymore I've actually I'm still the nice mish the loving kind funny happy mish but I just I don't want to be hurt my heart has been hurt way too much um and it's turned black a little bit you know Mm -hmm. cold I I didn't see that so well, I look forward to seeing what what you and Lisa do with Reap Investigations. It will be interesting to see all the things that you guys all have to share. Oh yeah, my 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 West Coast team were amazing. I've got Lisa Ludwig, I've got Rhonda uh, Grimes, I've got um, Casey Rathman. We're 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 some powerful women, and uh, we kick butt. We do. And I've got uh, Brian and Charlie in California. They're amazing as well. We're a great team. I'm excited what's coming. So, and there's going to be a lot coming. I, I believe that. I do do believe that you guys have a lot lot to share with everyone. And, mm-hmm. and I think I'm friends with all but one person on your team. But um, that, that's they they all have really great reputations that I know mm-hmm. of. Yep. So can't ask for better than that. And you guys yeah. work well together, so that counts for a lot. Yeah. We're, so, we're a loving bunch. We all love each other. It's it's great. It's great energy. I can see that. So um so what do you we still got about six minutes. Okay. So um, what, where do you see your team in five years? Here's the job interview question. <laughs> oh my gosh. In five years. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping we stay together and do what we do. You know, I just, I can't, I can't say because, you know, a lot of teams, I've seen a lot of teams break up. Yeah, me people. too. People, you know, going their own path, doing their own path, doing their own thing. I mean, I've done it. I was on a team and then I went solo. I mean, some people are going to choose 
and uh, you know another road or maybe find something else that they love to do or whatever i mean we just we just want to focus on the now and okay. not not the future um, well that's fair you know cuz so. some people some of the teams i've talked to do have future goals and they have a timeline on in which they're actually trying to meet their goals uh but i think it's more they're doing it more as business then. Yeah, us we're we're just we're out there, you know, to to mentor, to help, to collaborate with other teams, to to work together and and try and find answers, you know. Um that's it. What what do you feel is the most important aspect of a paranormal investigation? Um teamwork working together that's my my thing getting along working together um vibing together i mean that's pretty much no drama absolutely no drama any drama i will squash it right then and there we won't do it is there any advice you can give to a new somebody brand new getting into the paranormal just be you. Don't get a big head. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that think they're famous. You know, mm-hmm. I've got five minutes on a television show. Hey, I'm a I'm a public figure. Hey, look at me. No, that's not famous. No. You know, been there, um, done that. I mean, just, just just do if you feel that that's your passion and and that's what you you want to do do it start out basic you know get a little recorder get a k2 meter um, get some dowsing rods use your body your feelings your senses you know start Mm -hmm. out like that and then um i mean don't do residentials (laughs) you know unless you are you know work with other teams that are used to doing residentials and probably possibly can teach you um, just don't go in there and and do that because that's sometimes that's a big mess. Um, respect, have respect for for the haunted locations and the historical buildings and landmarks and and all that good stuff and and cemeteries. Just be respectful. That's yeah. all. That that's all very good advice. So. If there if there's one thing you want everybody to remember you by, what is that? Just my kind soul, my heart, just just who I am. I just hope when when someone hears my name, they smile, and that's that's all. <laughs> well, you know, I do when I hear your name. So it <laughs> thank you. And, and Kat says every time. So, so you've you've made it you've made it that far with at least the two of us. Plus, we know your team members. So, yes. you know, so you don't have to worry about that. So, I'm gonna thank you so much for coming on my show tonight. I know that you're out of town and and everything. So, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy work schedule to to be on. And everyone might. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, my guest next week is Jill Shelley. So it'll be interesting to have someone on, another person who's never been on my show before. And (laughs) we will learn all about Jill and the paranormal through her eyes. And because, you know, we learn so much through other people's eyes. So that's all I can say. I know I've learned a lot just listening to everybody give me their stories. So... But everyone, you're listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. We will see you all next Monday at 7 p.m. Central right here. And thank you again, Michelle. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Good night, everyone.